I think so much about running and the experience of going on a long run, it is uncertainty. There's doubt, there's fear. So much happens internally in our brains of like, just don't do it, don't show up. Just do five miles and stop. The ability to actually push through that mental barrier is what I love about running the most. If you didn't document your Ooh, running career, would that. you still be running? I think I would. Actually, I... Marathon runner and content creator Matt Choi has completed over 30 marathons and has just finished running across Korea, all while creating a huge impact on millions online. Before we get into this episode, don't forget to check out the Spicy Bit of Meat podcast YouTube channel. After every interview, Tyler and I will be taking on the skill we just discussed. Matt Choi, what is your expertise? Running and creating. And if you had a choice between a mullet and a big head where you have to shave it big to the scalp. What are you choosing? I would go mullet. <laughs> well, I think I would I would have to just grow this out, right? Would you say you'd rock a mullet? I'd rock a mullet. Getting to the deep and nitty gritty. People always ask me like to grow my hair out like a K-pop star, but I've just never <laughs> I've never wanted to do the part halfway <laughs> yeah. and like, you know? My complexion's darker than a normal Korean. I don't have a typical Korean like hairstyle and or look um which is a good thing and a bad thing i mean obviously i think it shows my uh my i guess whitewashedness because <laughs> <laughs> you're you're half korean no i'm full korean oh you're full I'm korean, full korean. Uh, grew up okay. in new york but you grew up in grew up in new york and new jersey um both my parents are from korea they're both from seoul grew up with most of my mom my parents are divorced split when i was super young so kind of lived the life of monday through friday in the suburbs of new jersey Friday through Sunday, I would go live in the city with my dad. He's always owned a bodega. Like that's has been his immigrant story of bodega life. Well, then why did it always take him having to bribe you with toys in order to do anything around the bodega? <laughs> that's some good research. Um, you know, what's funny is that, I don't know, like as a kid, me and my brother always found creative ways to have fun. Like we didn't have a lot. There wasn't always a lot of access for us to like to do things. But like my dad would basically give us like, the streets near the bodega like that's how like our proximity to go explore you guys know in new york when they have like the little like uh the ladders to like the outdoor stairs oh it was the best thing we would so use that as a basketball hoop <laughs> like, literally making it through the thing Very whether cool. it was on the first one or the second one like we would count it as one point or two points like that was our way to one just use our own creative genius but also stay active and like entertain ourselves how street smart way i think me and my brother are very street smart honestly i think we're just gritty in the sense of like something about being in new jersey and new york like naturally you have to build like a level of toughness and a level of mm. grit i mean i grew up in vegas for a couple years too so like that's kind of where i started to get exposed to a lot of sun and then the melanin in my skin just like literally sun it's cream? a blessing sun cream do you use it sunscreen sunscreen yeah fang. sunscreen cream not really well i mean i've never seen a running clip of you without with a shirt on. I know. So that could be also the-, the Guys, the, you know the yeah. funny thing is I have a goal to do something in that space. Were you wearing a shirt or no. you're not? You're not wearing sunscreen. a shirt. <laughs> oh, in the sunscreen. Oh. <laughs> oh, really? That's just like a dr mic drop. You I shouldn't like, even said I that. I said sunscreen and you're like, what do you mean sunscreen? I'm yeah. like, sunscreen. It's nothing. It's nothing. I don't like the greasiness of sunscreens. Yeah. And obviously, like, there's like a bunch of like research that shows that depending on what the ingredients are in the sunscreen, that there's a lot of cancerous ingredients, even as you put it on your skin. Obviously, if you don't put anything on your skin, you can get skin cancer. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, are you playing on offense? Are you playing on defense? Yeah. But obviously, you know, nowadays, like finding things that have proper ingredients is important. And I think Korean skincare is probably premium in terms of like they're yeah. top of the game. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it, it'll be interesting. But I, I definitely, a goal of mine is to, to, to tap into the, I guess, skin product skincare yeah. space at some point, specifically for athletes. If you can get sunscreen that doesn't, when you sweat, go in your eyes and sting, Bro. then I'll be, Customer. You, you take my money. Fair. If you can make sun cream, that gives me the Korean glass skin. I'd be an ambassador. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I love, I love that we we got a little tidbit about his future endeavors. But let's talk about what you're doing right now. Ten marathons in ten months. Yeah. How fit is your videographer? My brother and other videographers I have, they are, they've naturally gotten into the activity now because they almost have no choice after <laughs> editing all the content that they see. It's wild how much they have to run because you have to go 
forward and backwards. Yes. Uh, when my brother films me, a lot of the time it's on a bike, which mm. is, is right. it helps a ton. But other shots that my videographers get, they're not on bikes. They like they will go to mile three yeah. and then they'll have to go meet me at mile 10 and then mile 18 and then yeah. mile 22. There's a lot of moving pieces. I think naturally everyone that's worked with me has slowly got it into running yeah. because like they start realizing like, oh shoot, like when I go shoot with Matt, like it's not just like we're in a beautiful studio. <laughs> Moments where we're on the track or we're out on the like in, yeah. on Lady Bird Lake, like they start realizing like, oh shoot, like to get the shot from the creative lens, they have to be moving with me because it makes it more like actionable, you know? It makes it like a live movie almost. How much of a say do they have if they're waking up going, oh, I don't want to do much today and you're going, no, we're doing a 10 miler. If it's a dedicated shoot, it's more like, all right, this is the brand we're working with. This is the type of video we need to make. And like, let's bang this out in 30 minutes. Yeah. Like I wouldn't make them come on like a 10 mile <laughs> route with, it, you know, <laughs> yeah, like those you days would. I just like, I mean, I would if they, <laughs> if, if they were they willing. It it's was, all about yeah. the mindset. Yeah. It is about the mindset. And I think it's actually, I, I would say that it's rubbed on them in a positive way yeah, for yeah, other yeah. aspects of people that they work with and or their day-to-day -day lives. And I think it's one of those things naturally, like even for me, like I love hanging around people that are doing things that I don't typically do yeah. or doing things at a higher level because naturally it rubs off on you and you just kind of like, oh, you know, being a student is a good thing. And I was a very poor student. So now I try to find opportunities, whether it's in work or in play or in my hobbies where I can always be a student. You started as a footballer, mm -hmm. division one footballer. I play rugby, okay? And I think both of us could say that running is normally the punishment and essentially the worst running is long distance running. Yeah. If we talk about any, why? Why do you do this to yourself? And how do you go from being a footballer with that mindset where you're really yeah. only engaged for eight seconds at a time, for it's sure. all power to now being like, okay, let's run for, what did you do? Four miles every four hours for 48 hours? Like that's <laughs> ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Um, I completely agree. I mean, running was a form of punishment, especially in our sports. I mean, in rugby, if anything, you guys are probably in better shape than football players. Yeah, I guess cardio-wise, yes. probably. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I think once I was done with sports, it was kind of like finding an outlet to commit to, like finding something else to like build a discipline in. Things I've like realized really about running and why I enjoy it so much is that it's like the uncertainty of it. It's not having the answers. And I think so much about running and the experience of going on a long run, it is uncertainty. There's doubt, there's fear that happens when you're like, oh my God, I gotta run 10 miles. Oh my God, I gotta run 20 miles. And so much happens internally in our brains of like, like just don't do it. Don't show up, just do five miles and stop. Yeah. And I think the ability to actually push through that mental barrier is what I love about running the most. And it's what I've found that helps me in not only just running, but helps me in business, it helps me in relationships, it helps me in, in everything that I do because I'm able to see it at a, in a different light where most people are afraid of uncertainty. They don't wanna go into something that they don't have the answer to. Why would you wanna start a business if you, don't, if you think it's gonna fail? Mm. Why would you want to get in a relationship if you think it's not going to work, right? So I think the ability to get comfortable with the uncertainty and then the fear and the doubt has allowed me to continue to stay patient and dil diligent with it. And now as people look at me, they literally think I've been running my whole life. Mm -hmm. And I've been able to turn something that was a weakness yeah. into a strength off sheer discipline and consistency. I think a lot of the reason why people follow my stuff is that in a sense, it is relatable. Not too long ago, I was sitting in your chair saying the same thing, like I could never run a marathon. Mm. I could never do a hundred mile race. And I think as soon as we realize that the words that we speak matter, like they're spells, like if you say it, then it's true. Mm. And until you're able to unwire your own software internally and, and say, hey, maybe I can do it. And then you give yourself a shot to go try. And I think there's a liberating feeling when you go on some of these quests, which I call them like in terms of long runs, it is a journey that you're on yourself to, like, to see what you're capable of. And I think that's why I love it so much because it's on, honestly never ending too. It's like, as we continue to get older, more people think like, oh, you've made it. Like you're making this much, this much money. You had this job. You, you've kind of hit the accolades of quote unquote life. But then we stop learning about what we can still do as humans. And I think I'm still on that quest of like, what are we actually capable of? And instead of me just reading a book, which is awesome to gain insight from David Goggins or Nick Bear or whoever, I'd rather actually do it myself so I have my own story around it. We're around you. You're saying these things. So now Beck is going to get the wise idea. Well, let's do a marathon, but we're not capable of it. 
not in the current state, <laughs> but what like your, in the future. Your words. You're encouraging us to do something we can't do yet. Hundred <laughs> percent. And I, I think that's how everything starts, though, right? Yeah. It's like this podcast for you guys. It's 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 how you guys started your brands. Like it's how you got into rugby. Like no one on day one is as good as they're gonna be on day ninety or on day three sixty five or on day a thousand. Mm. And I think it's just a matter of you keep showing up even when you don't want to, even when it rains. I think it's the ability to overcome, like. And be just be resilient. You can only control the things that's in your power. So focus on those things and leave the le- leave the rest of it to be. It's like no different than social, right? So if we're comparing the running and the creating, which are the two things I said, when you make a video, you can't control how someone's going to feel about it. You can't control a negative comment, a positive comment. Like those things are, cl- are just out of your control. So you control the engagement it gets. Hundred percent. Like if it if does well, if do it goes well. viral, like yeah. like those things are out of your power. So all you can do is, hey, a video does well, awesome. Show up the next day, make another post. The video does poorly, awesome. Show up the next day, make another post. Mm-hmm. And it's dealing internally with the criticism, the admiration, the love, and the hate that I think a lot of creators struggle with because it's so easy to be on your high horse when people are giving you love and videos are going viral. But those first thirty days when 100 people are watching your stuff or 10 people. Mm. It gets so easy to be discouraged. Like, why am I going to keep posting? Like, it's not working. It's not working. It's no different than in the gym. You show up in 30 days in the gym, you're not going to see any results probably. But you show up 60 days, 90 days, you might be like, oh my God, like the scale's moving a little bit or I feel better. But a lot of those things you can't textualize until you sit, wait a year and you're like, oh my God, like this was a proper transformation. That's interesting that you bring up like kind of starting from day one, because I understand like, your first marathon you attempted, you, you you actually didn't finish it. You did about 18 miles and yeah. called it, right? Yeah. How important was that to kind of actually achieving a mile? 1,000. Sorry, a marathon. It was everything. I think it's putting ourselves in situations where you're okay with failure. So many of us are scared to fail because of the judgment that we get of, you started that business and it didn't work out. Just go get a corporate job, just like all of us. Mm -hmm. That's people's mindset. They're scared to put themselves out there because they're going to get judgment of, oh my God, you couldn't complete your first marathon. I put myself in a position where the variables were not on my side. I brought no nutrition. I didn't eat anything before. I didn't bring water. And it was 95 degrees outside in Maryland. I understand it was just, you just decided one day, I'm just going to do it. This was not a race. This was just literally, I lived at my house. I put in my high school because we had moved since, since I went to high school and it was 13 miles away. I was like, how old were you? This was 26. Like this was 20, 25 because I ran my first official marathon on my 26th birthday. How many marathons have you run now? From 25 till today. I, I, I'm in the, if I'm counting marathons and ultra marathons. Yeah, oh. everything. In like the, the 30 range. Wow. That's more kilometers I drive on my car. You do know that. We don't <laughs> go too, anywhere. <laughs> we work from home. We so. go just to the corner shop <laughs> yeah. and back. This is the biggest outing we've had all week. So. so on average, how many miles are you running a week? It, it just depends. Like in, this past year, I've been in a in a realm of anywhere from forty to fifty five miles a week. What? Which is actually not that much compared to like, like obviously elite runners or people that are only running. Like because I cross train and I do like a lot of other forms of, of of fitness and wellness, my mileage actually has not been that high. Like when I was training for a sub three marathon, I was running like sixty sixty five miles a week. Mm. Some people are training. 80 to 120 miles a week. But that's all, like they're literally strictly, they they just run six, seven days a week. For me, it's like I'm running five, six days a week, but like my mileage is less and I'm doing a lot more lifting, swimming, Mm. like Pilates, yoga. Like I'm I'm mixing things up because I've just found that it helps me stay healthy. People always ask me like, yo, how do you stay healthy? I'm like, well, you do a lot of things outside of running. Like that's actually been the formula for me. It's been sleep and nutrition, but then finding different modalities of fitness that aren't just this this one movement, this linear movement of running. Because if you think about it, it's so repetitive. People get the same injuries over and over because you're asking your body to do the same movement for hours on hours on end. Mm. I mean, sleeping must be pretty easy for you. I'm doing 40 miles a week. Yeah. When I go to sleep, it's like, you're, I'm you're out. Dumb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all a perspective though, because you'll say, even if you said five miles a week, I'd be like, oh my goodness. You've worked your way up to that. And it's also the people that you're surrounding yourself with. Us being with you is able to like open our eyes as to what is actually accomplishable. I agree. Like, let, let me pull it back. When I first started running, the first thing I did was the Mike Murphy workout 
30 days in a row. Mike Murphy, can you explain that to The me? Memorial Day workout. It's to, for Lieutenant Mike Murphy, the movie Lone Survivor with Mark Wahlberg. Right. It's based on the the character that, that ends up dying, one, like their lieutenant. It's a one mile run, 100 pull-ups, 200 push-ups, 300 body squats, and then another one mile. mile run. People yeah. do this with a weighted vest. Every day. I did this every day for 30 days. So by the end of it, I ran 60 miles at the end of the month. So that's now what I do in a week around, right? right? When I was at peak marathon training, I think so many people, like they want to bite off the chunk of the watermelon versus eating just one grape at a time. Yeah, yeah. Like start with a mile. Like yeah. for you guys, it'd be ludicrous to be like, I'm going to go run 40 miles. Like, mm -hmm. no, you're going to hurt yourself. Hear that? Yeah. You know? Hear that, so I think it's We're like- We're not going to run 40 miles. Yeah, but I think for you guys, like a legitimate goal is like f start with five miles a week eight miles a week, like whatever the number is that you feel like you can commit yourself to. And that would be one to two miles a day, or you do three days a week where you do two miles. And I think it's starting with small goals and building this foundation, just like a house, mm. anything that's worth building, it's going to take time. But most people don't want to listen to that because it's not sexy. It's like, just give me the 30 day program. I have to go run sub three. It's like, you understand that it took me three marathons to go run sub three, yeah. which for some people, that's a lot. That's some people, that's nothing. Like some people literally spend years to try to hit sub three. So they come up to me and they're like, Matt, I can't believe you did sub three. You just got into running. So I'm also understanding that and I'm I'm very empathetic that I'm I'm we're athletes. All of us, right? It's actually easier to be an athlete that runs than a runner that just runs. Because you already have a base built of yeah. tissue tolerance yeah. and like you have your body, your your body's been trained to do a lot of things in rugby. Mm. Sprint, jump, like like cut laterally, right? So when you get into running, you're just focusing on this one discipline and naturally for athletes, it becomes an easier transition. I think the, the key point to that is also like the mindset of it. And when you get to the top level of any sport, the differences between the, the best is very, very minute. Yeah. And your changes at that point are so small, you're almost training for these like minor gains that you might, that most people won't even realize. How much of running is actually a mindset to compared to actually the talent itself? So like being someone mm. who's just started, how much is mindset going to do for you compared to actually the talent? Take or me, for example. I am not an athlete. How many miles have we run this year? Maybe like f six this year. I ran one with you and you guys went to endorphins. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We got we? lost. We were so slow. We ended up in another group. I saw that. <laughs> By the way, what's a fart leg? A fart lick workout is it's speed play. Oh, it's fart fart. fart lick? How are you saying it? Fart lick. Like, like a fart. Like a like. Like fart, fart lick. Yes. Like fart. Yeah. Like fart lick. Like F A R T L E K. It is uh, fart like, lick. It is a fart. What is a fart lick workout is a speed play workout where you're basically mixing in faster tempos with slower speeds. So, for example, mm -hmm. go for a three mile run. Start with a one mile warm up. Right. Then from there, you're going to go one minute fast, mm. two minutes slow as hell. Uh, so then you just change your body and you give your body different mechanisms of like using threshold and then using base. Right. So yeah. then you're like, all right, all I got to do is run hard for one minute and right. then I can take a break and go slow. It helps people understand the concept of like what their body can actually do. Because most people yeah. go on a run on three miles, they're just, they're suffering for three mm -hmm. miles. They're like, yeah. what, what is this going to stop? Yes, that yeah, happened. Right? But if you actually mix <laughs> in the actual, like the fart lick aspect, it's yeah. a great way to, to start doing speed work for a new run. Right. And also it's a great workout for even yeah. intermediate and, or yeah. experienced runners. Yeah. Would you recommend a fart leg to uh, beginners who want to run a mile? I think it's a great way. Or improve that mile time. 100%. Yeah. I think even better for a mile time, it would be to go on a track and then do track interval workouts where you're doing like 400 meters mm -hmm. repeats or 800 meter repeats where you do two laps and then you walk for 90 seconds or two minutes and then you do another one because you're working your threshold at a, at a, at a higher state. The fart leg workouts are also good. It's kind of very similar if you think about the concept of you ran an eight minute, uh, a, like a seven minute mile, which basically means that you can run each lap at 145, right? A minute, 45 seconds. So that's like me telling you, hey, go run for 90 seconds hard, three minutes slow. Right. You're running one 400 meter, roughly. Mm. So as, you, as you're able to build up your tolerance, your fart lick workouts become two minutes fast, two minutes slow, or three minutes fast, 90 seconds slow. So the ability to raise your heart rate, but drop it back down to then raise it up again, yeah. Yeah. it helps you because in a marathon, it's more even. So the ability to, like, it's no different than breath work, right? Or when you're in a sauna plunge, 
in the sauna, your heart rate raises. In the plunge, it decreases. Um, but that's what a fart lick is. It's speed play. The only reason I know what that is or even heard of the word, we thought it was fart leg. Uh, that no, would fart lick. <laughs> People think that though. Fart leg. <laughs> is because, well, the first day that we met you, well, we didn't really meet. We kind of just... We were in, yeah. We were in the same pr proximity was that community run, the full mile community yes. run. The run club where everyone's like super happy. Everyone. Run. We were happy. Everyone. And me, <laughs> me and Beck, I was looking at Beck, I was like, this is the worst decision of my life. I was like, what like, are we, we doing? Run four we are miles. not ready for this. Four miles. I've never just gone to do a mile yeah. run. Like that's not something we do. Like, you know, do interval training, yes, like yes, any yes, kind of thing yes. or any distance training, but it's never been like a mile because also you guys use a different metric system than us. Yeah, you guys use Ks. Yeah, we use the, the whole numbers. You guys choose not to. I know. <laughs> Americans want to be different. They do. But, but the, yeah, the, the <laughs> <laughs> she was like, well, let's do this run club. They're doing four miles. And we're like, well, we've only done one. She goes, yeah, but it's just three more. And it's like, it's not just three more. It's four it miles. See, I had the good mindset at the start. And then you kind of switched it up while we were running and had a better endurance I was mindset. dragging her. At yeah. the start, she was dragging me. At the end, I was dragging her. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it goes. Yeah. So I mean, but you finished it. We got kind of. lost. We did the four miles. Yeah. We finished. We the walked, thing, but a we bit. we actually probably did more than four miles because we lost our group. Yeah, we were trying to find. You guys went to raw. <laughs> yeah. We went to the fart leg. Group. We were so slow. We ended up in another group. That's an achievement in itself. Like it they were the hour later group, and we like, experienced two run clubs <laughs> yeah. in one day. And the guy was super nice that we met. Yeah, we kind, of, we kind of almost wanted to just go. Hey, can we just join this club? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll say that you would have suffered more because that club does not play around. Um, Oh, you know it? I know them raw. They're oh, right. that is it them? Yeah, yeah, it's raw because they they were doing the they were doing a fart like workout around Zilker. It's it's a common workout that, that they is, do. Yeah. That is. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. a it's a popular workout because it's on grass. Um there's some elevation, but it's the grass is much kinder on your knees and your uh, joints, oh. but no, that th that group their whole thing is train hard and party hard. When I first moved to Austin, it was one of the first clubs I went to and they were like, yeah, we don't want to lose. We're getting so we're getting very big, but we don't want to lose the framework of this club. Like we're going to fucking run hard, but we're going to chug some beers after. Like that's their whole thing. It's like, it, it, it's cool. Sounds it's like rugby. Like, yeah, I like that. It feels like, like something that we'd want to join. Can yeah. you out train your lifestyle? In what sense? Like, like in McDonald's that sense, diet. We're, we're there, they're essentially saying we're going to kill ourselves today. But then we're gonna enjoy a thousand beers tonight, and, and you know it's all it's all relative, right? Like everyone's not go, getting hammered, no, but like no, they're having no. a beer, they're enjoying themselves, right? Versus other like elite runners that might be like, I don't want to drink, or mm -hmm. and actually you'd be surprised at elite runners drinking beers. Yeah, I, I think it's all a personal thing of finding a balance of what works for you, ultimately. And I think that's my typical answer for anything, whether it's a a, a substance or it's alcohol or, or whatever it is. Like you need to find what works for you. And ultimately that's like a selfish decision, right? Like, yeah, some people, they can go train hard and they can enjoy some beers and take a couple of tequila shots and they're good. Like, is that sustainable in the long term? Maybe, maybe not. But I think you have to find your own balance and what works for you. Obviously, we I could talk about the data of how your sleep is impacted and all this shit. But at the end of the day, we live one life. Yes. There's people that live in the blue zones in Japan, in 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 Sardinia, like, like so many places where they drink alcohol and they're living to a hundred. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's an alcohol thing. I think it's a balance thing. Mm. And in America, people's life expect expectancy is not nearly as high as some other countries or specifically other blue zones. So I think it's important for people to find their own balance with wellness, with fitness with leisure and all those things. It's such a big balance to be able to enjoy the yeah. fruits of your labor as well, which is, you know, you run in a marathon, celebrate that. 100%. You, know? you went from a team sport to an individual sport. It's yeah. completely different in how you train, uh, how you show up and how you perform. How does someone transition from that, like, you know, a team dynamic to being like individual, you're responsible for your own training, discipline, yeah. diet, everything. I love this. I mean, I, it's similar but different. I always say this. It's like when you're a part of a team, rugby, football, you build team discipline. I'm showing up because I'm the person next to me, my coach, they're expecting me to show up and do my job. In this aspect, it's discipline, but it's self. Mm -hmm. No one asked me to wake up this morning and go run outside in the rain. I just chose to do that. And the ability to build self-discipline, I think it's one of the most powerful things because it carries with you in every aspect of life, whether it's in fitness or your business or your like whatever it is. So I think the biggest thing I've realized is that, yeah, like 
you're not going to always have someone to, to cheer you up or a coach that's going to be on your ass of like, why didn't you train today, right? But there is aspects of this individual sport that you can still create elements of team and camaraderie and community. You can hire a coach that's going to build you out a plan that then can keep you accountable to. You can go to run clubs and find local friends or peers that are running similar paces or have similar goals as you to then, you know, maybe meet up for once or twice a week, weekly run. So even though it's an individual sport, I think there's still a lot of aspects of a team and a community that are built in running. And some people are, you know, like lone po lone wolves, like they, they want to train on their own and they don't want to talk to no one. And I've seen that before. Equally, there's people that only run in run clubs. I think I'm very in the middle. I don't really go to a dedicated run club in Austin. I have a lot of friends I run with in Austin. I don't mind going to run clubs. It's just, for me, it's like, I, I like my routine. I typically run in the morning. Like I don't like running in the evening because that's typically when I'm in the gym or when I'm just like chilling and hanging out. So I actually like the balance of both. Like most people think I'm so extroverted when in reality, I'm very introverted. Like I like my time. I like my solitude. And a lot of times running is, is that moment for me where like there's not distractions. Like I bring my phone, but it's only to record a couple of clips. Like I'm not looking at emails or doing business or work stuff. It's like my time for an hour to 90 minutes or whatever, 30 minutes where I'm just in my own space. I think the biggest thing I've learned is that discipline carries over into other things. In running, you need to be more self-disciplined, but you can find people and community in the space to help you kind of stick to it. When you woke up today and decided to go run in the thunderstorm, Tornado warning. <laughs> yeah, it was. A severe flood warning. <laughs> it was like, do not run today if you're thinking yes. about it. That's Matt what the, Choi. the weatherman Matt Choi. said. <laughs> they, they said, Stop don't it run. Now. <laughs> um, so you woke up and you're like, I'm going to go run today. Did you just decide when you woke up to go do that? Or do you have like a plan, a structure? Because for me, I'm really interested, even in the content creation side, how you create a system for both showing up online very consistently and showing up with with running very consistently. 100%. Did you wake up today and was like, I'm going to run in the thunderstorm? Well, there's a mixture for today in specific. Like I had a plan to, to record content. Okay. I had two friends that were asking me to do a mile PR. And because I'm going to New York next week, I'm like squeezing as much in the next five to six days. So I had a commitment to two people where I said, hey, my first buddy, Bobby, was like, hey, eight o'clock, it's in my Google calendar. So I'm like locked in. If it's in the Google calendar, it's locked in. <laughs> so eight o'clock, I was like, all right, I'm already doing that. My buddy Choice was like, yo, I would love to do a PR. I'm like, all right, well, Thursday, I'm already on the track. Meet me at 745. And I got there at 715 because I wanted to get like a small workout in prior to running the miles with them. And when I actually showed up and woke up That's this morning, small. it wasn't raining. So actually, when I woke up, I'm like, oh. You know, I looked at the weather last night. It said maybe 30 or 40%. So I'm like, it's a win. Started as soon as I get to the track, at seven. it starts yeah. pouring. Mm -hmm. And now I'm like, all right. Like, uh, it, 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 I love it though. Because to your point, when I show up to a marathon or a race, I don't know if it's going to be perfect weather. I don't know if it's going to rain. I don't know if it's going to be snowing. Like, I, I can't pick that. I can't choose the weather that's going to happen. All I can do is respond to it. Mm -hmm. So even when it started pouring it, I'm like, I love it. Like, let's go. Like, this is going to help me when the next race I go to, it's going to be pouring and I'm going to be like, I've been here before. So that's kind of my mindset in terms of like how I have like built systems for the um, content. I think it's, it's weird. Like I've gotten so used to documenting everything that I have content at scale. At the same time, it can seem organized, but it's controlled chaos mm -hmm. because I have ideas, I have content, I have that things that I shoot. A lot of it comes from feedback I get from the community. Like I'll have a post, if it, if it does well and people are asking a lot of the same questions, I'll cover that topic. And it's not that I had this great idea. It's just literally people are asking me, what is your favorite shoe? And I'm like, oh, I'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> so that's how I get a lot of the content. It's like a feedback loop from the community mm -hmm. because I think that's the best way to create an engaged community is that you give them the answers that they're looking for. Like you give them feedback, whether you know it or not, on what they're asking. And I think that's what I've been able to do a good job of. Day to day, like, like running is part of my day to day life. I'm going to document it. I'm going to film it. And if I have nothing else to post, if it's not a podcast clip or if I'm not doing a Costco haul or mm -hmm. like cooking, like running will be the consistent flow of content. And then I try to sprinkle in like new ideas or creative thoughts that I have that maybe show a different side of who I am. Because so many times it's like, if it's just running, then it's like, you're keeping that one note. 
I think the biggest challenge my mentors always told me, he's like, you want to have fluency. Like you want to be able to sit down in a podcast with people that don't run. Then you want to sit with someone that is into stocks and investing. And then someone that's into real estate, someone that's into beauty and healthcare and the ability to sit in different rooms and still feel comfortable, even though you're not the expert. I think that's like been my challenge. It's like, be a lifelong learner. Like yeah. coming back to what I said earlier, like be a student of the game because the moment that you're only like known for the one thing, what if that one thing's taken from me? Yeah. What if I can't run anymore? I would just build my brand in a different way. And, and sometimes think, if you stay on that same note, it can almost, you could take it, it away from yourself. For sure. Because you no not lo no longer interested. Burnout as well. Mm. You're doing like probably two videos a day yeah. and you're creating these like almost problems within a, a thing that people need to overcome and it's like this is what you do so you're kind of having to be creative about how you display content that's essentially going to be similar in the over in the, in the general visuals, sense right yeah, in the which subject. is i mean like every everyone is every niche it's, it's everything is like that right mm -hmm. like yeah finance they have the same thing you know it's all going to be like this one sector how can you keep re-innovating and repurposing mm. that content so you have to be pretty damn creative to do that I appreciate, no, I, I thank you. I mean, I appreciate that. I think it's making it accessible, but also fun. Most people, when they think of a marathon, it's like, what would you think, right? It's like, oh my no God, fun. Fun, no way. <laughs> like, smile is no fun. Yeah. <laughs> like, people are suffering. They're in yeah. the pain cave. But yeah. the ability to like, yeah, put that on its head and be like, oh, but I can show you, like, let me put a twist to it and show you that you can enjoy yourself. You can have fun. You can drink a beer on the course. You can eat a donut. Like, mm. I think so many people take themselves so seriously because a lot of runners are type A. People call me a runner, but like, even for me, like, I don't always feel like I'm like the typical runner, right? You're tall. I'm taller, but even in like, in how I look, but even in like the way I approach running, it's very laissez-faire. Like, I don't really stress myself prior to races, like, unless I'm really dedicated to a goal time. But so much of it is just like, I, I just, I really try to show up lighthearted. Like, I don't feel like there's pressure. And I think a lot of times with runners or, or anyone that's trying to perform, it's like, oh my God, if I don't hit this time, I'm going to be mad at myself or I'm going to be disappointed. And it's okay to be disappointed because you didn't hit a goal. But to think that you're getting all this validation off hitting a time, like I'm already validated. Like I already validated myself. I don't care what the time is. And I think that's like, there's a level of self-esteem and self-awareness that I've just been able to build through a lot of these miles and or things I've done in the in, in through football and in my years where I don't really need to get validated because I run fast. And a lot of people feel like they need that because they're like, oh my God, I'm the fastest person in my age group. I'm the fastest this, I'm the fastest female. I'm the, and I just don't see it in that way. It's like very few people are gonna break world records, but all of us, every human that goes to, a, most humans that go to a race can set their personal record. And I think that's my message always. It's like, be the best version of yourself. Don't worry about what Kipchoge is doing. It's almost impossible to get to that point, but you can always set a PR for yourself. And that's a gratifying thing. Bringing it to the content creation side of it with running, it's like, I want to be the fastest runner or I'm the fastest mile time or whatever. For a content creation, I think people get hung up on the engagement, the views, whether it's doing well. How much pressure do you put on yourself to show up every day online? It's not even pressure at this point. It's just it's it's become if you second felt like, nature. Yeah, like but if I if I didn't want to post for a week, I would just be I would be fine. Okay. I wouldn't think that my brand's gonna be like tarnished that Matt's not posting for a week, mm -hmm. you know? I don't really feel pressure to, to like have to show up. It's just I'm consistent with it and it doesn't feel like a job. I like that. Yeah. Cause I feel like I, I put a lot of pressure on myself and I think there's no need for it whatever happens happens you can't suddenly be creative if you put pressure on yourself i like that i like also the the idea of just documenting your daily lifestyle and it doesn't have to be this perfect thing it's just showing up regardless and you also don't have to be doing something fun in order to I film do, it. yeah Beck feels like she has to be doing something that they're going to find fun but you're entertaining in yourself 100 that's the bit that's fun well thank you very much <laughs> You're very successful online and it's amazing how much the brand that you've built over two years or three years, what would have happened if your engagement was less or it didn't happen? Yeah, that's a great question. Would you be showing up every day? I, I would. You know, yeah. and I, you know how I know? It's because I showed up like that. I showed up how I show up now when I had a thousand followers, mm -hmm. when I was making videos out of my mom's dining room table. Like 
when you were making French press coffee tutorials. French press coffee. coffee. Yeah. You guys watched that. I fucking loved it. We the did. Day. We that was a That was a cringe it. video. No, but you it have was come. the best. <laughs> no, but you have come so far and, you sh and it shows day one to day thousand. Yeah. Like you on camera natural then you were like you you were you were you could tell you were you were new to it yeah but now you're like a you're a seasoned professional so it's actually quite quite cool to actually see I love it. how fluent you are at talking now yeah it's really it's, reps. it's quite cool yeah. yeah it is reps yeah i think the the answer is that i would have kept building the discipline and the skill set to to get better at it and even if i didn't start getting virality to, when i moved to austin it would have just been working that muscle until something happened. For me, it was never a goal of like, I wanna hit 100,000 followers, 200,000 followers. Like that was always a thought, of course, when I first hit 10K. I was like, oh shit, like, I wonder That's what that possible. would look like. Yeah, yeah. It, it's awesome to see that like there's impact getting made in some form or fashion off of video, right? And like, that's always where my mind goes. It's like, it didn't matter to me if five people liked it or a hundred people liked it or 10 people liked it. It's like the fact that like I was getting engagement or responses from people that were like, yo, I started running because of you or I started to create content or put myself out there because of you. Like that to me, like if one person reached out to me, that's all that, that mattered to me. And I think now it's like, it's so easy to be like, oh, now you have so many people that follow you. It's still like small relative to, if you think about huge creators, mm -hmm. right? So I think it's not a game about comparison. I think internally, like I was already self-aware and my my self-esteem was already good when I had no one following me. Now it's just, I've built this following where people think I'm changing. Like I really feel like I'm the same person. I've become wiser and like I've learned a lot of stuff on the, along the way, but like my lifestyle or like who I am as a human has not really changed. And only the people that really know me that are close to me would understand that, right? Like my mom or my brother or people that saw me when like no one really cared about what I was doing. Mm -hmm. Like there was so much... There was a long time where friends of mine in high school never supported the shit I made. Friends of mine in college never liked or engaged with any of my shit, but now they see my stuff and they're like, yo, it's so dope. And I'm like, and it's not that I have to like have spite. It's just like, you know, it's, it's how the world works. When you're first starting anything, no one's really gonna support you until you create some buzz for yourself. And until you have enough delusional self-confidence in yourself that you're gonna do it, that you're gonna make it, that I'm worthy, that I'm all these things. It almost needs to be delusional. How else is anyone going to believe in you if you don't fucking believe in yourself? Yeah. Period. Yeah, you well, you got to convince yourself you can do it. Otherwise, you're not going to. Dude, how can you convince anyone else if you don't yeah. believe it yourself? Yeah. Does documenting actually hold you more accountable? Like, do you think if you didn't <laughs> if you didn't document your Ooh, running career, would that. you still be running? I think I would. Actually, I know I would. You would. Hundred percent. I think because it's been such a benefit mentally for me that it outweighs the content opportunities mm -hmm. because of what it does for me as like a human, just like yeah. on a day-to-day -day level of like what it does for just my own mindset. Um, obviously running now becoming my, my job kind of, cause I, I really, people think that I'm just a runner full time. I'm like, well, technically I run a media company first and then yeah. I run and mm -hmm. like that becomes the yeah. vehicle. That's but the vehicle that you the vehicle. But at the end of the day, I see myself as a media through. company. Yeah. Right? Like I'm in the space of content creation, production and all of those things. Running is the hobby that I do that I then document, right? Mm -hmm. But I believe very well that I would still run even if I didn't have a personal brand because it would help me not only wellness wise, but like it would be something that I would be interested in, not only just because of the mental and the physical benefits. Did it, did it happen if it wasn't videoed? That's a question like if <laughs> you ran a PR or something, yeah. would you say it was official if it wasn't documented? A good friend of mine, he's older. His name's Ken Rideout. He's the fastest man in his age group, 50 and above. He runs 227 marathon. Unbelievable. I, I, that 530 was, I, pace. His biggest challenge for me is like, Matt, put your phone down, leave it in the hotel room, like go to a race where you're just only focused on running. Running, yeah. Don't even look at your watch. Like literally spending time to look at your watch is wasting energy. He's like, Matt, you could probably run 240 something. If you actually yeah. like didn't record anything and you yeah. fucking locked in and did like everything in your power to focus for two hours and 50 minutes on just this one thing. And I said, you're probably right. But like, this is also how I built my brand, mm -hmm. right? A lot of the comments I got from Chicago was, he ran sub three and he like held Tall. his phone. Yeah, like, he, he ran sub three, went to the bathroom and held his phone. Yeah, like, and he's like, he's like yeah. cheering with people. And I'm like, it was the shoes. It was, <laughs> the, <laughs> yes. it was the shoes, it was the shoes. <laughs> but yeah, I think there's a, there's a time and a place. I mean, I'm gonna run for a long time, hopefully, right? Knock on wood. And I think, uh, 
I'm just scratching the surface. That's really how I feel with even my content. Like I really feel like I'm just getting started and it's been having that like, I love when Gary talks about this clouds and dirt mentality. Like clouds is like your ambition, like what you want to do in this world, like the lasting impact that you want to have. And like, it's sometimes almost unbelievable to get there. The dirt is the shit that no one wants to do. The sacrifice, the waking up when, when you don't want to, the, the, the posting when, when it's not the best video and all the things that you are actually in control of in the day to day, the dirt. And I live so much like I'm in the dirt. Like I really feel like my actions are what I was doing four years ago at my mom's house. And it's actually the ingredients of how I've been able to have some level of success. It's not getting too high on my own supply mm -hmm. and just being grounded in my own humility to understand that, hey, I'm still building. I really feel like I'm just scratching the surface and finding my voice and now able to storytell in a way that resonates with more people. But so much of who I am is, is, is it's grounded in a level of, of, of security and humility of knowing who I am. If we bring Matt Choi out of the dirt for the last five minutes, what are your clouds? I love that. That's an amazing question. Um, I think the clouds are, are freedom. If I was like, hey, Matt, like, you know, there's X amount of the bank account. You don't have to post anymore. And I'm just like kind of living in my own peace. I mean, obviously, I, I want to have a family in the future. Like, I would love to retire my parents. For me, it's about freedom, though. Like, mm -hmm. ultimately, that's what I'm looking for. Like, I'm looking for freedom of time, freedom of options, freedom of money, like the ability to do the things I want to do when I want to do it. And like, that's kind of what my clouds looks like. It's not like a lavish lifestyle. It's not a Bugatti. It's not a Ferrari. It's like, if anything, I would love to like own like a farm or a ranch and like grow my own crops and like just live in peace in that sense. And just run Think about him. Just run around the farm, you know? <laughs> With his sheep. Yeah. You know, I'll have a grocery cattle. Be a and sheep you would be the sheep dog. You'd be the sheep dog yourself. Yeah. You'd but be, you would also have a sunscreen brand. Yeah. <laughs> but this sun, the sunscreen brand is going to be legitimate. Okay, so the whole reason for this podcast, as we told you, is is we want to bring on people that are experts in their field so that we can learn as people that are very average in ourselves, you know, sub subpar humans, that we think stop that, that, chat. Stop that. that it's achievable, these things that we think are out of reach. Because I've done many things in my, in my day that I've realized, wait a minute, like, if I thought about it a few years prior to that, no way, no chance. But then achieving it, it's like almost like, wait a minute, this is a lot more attainable for everyone, for someone that just you, all you have is five minutes with them. How do I make my mile time better? You know, they're not a runner. What would you say to me or Rebecca to make our mile time better today? Yeah. What I would say is the strategy on how to run it. Yeah. It would be running the first lap into, like the first two laps, it should be, at a rate of perceived effort, like an RPE, six and a half. You shouldn't be out of breath like a sprint okay. in rugby, yeah. but you shouldn't be jogging. Okay. So you shouldn't start off strong. You shouldn't start off at your fastest speed, no. Like you wanna conserve some energy. So the first two laps, I would say run at a six and a half effort level, right? right? The third lap, it burns. Your, the lactic acid in your legs start to build. So at that moment, it's about just staying in cruise control. Mm. If you're able to hold on to the pace that you've set for the first two laps, then you're in a really good spot. The fourth lap, it's kind of like, like that's when your opportunity to like let everything, everything. out of the tank, yeah. right? And it's only 400 meters. Like it's wrapping your brain around one lap. 90 seconds, two minutes, three minutes of work potentially. And my advice would be to try to get a little faster every 100 meters. Right. And it's somewhat hard to contextualize yeah. after you've already done three laps and you're like, yeah. I haven't ran in years. I'm fucking already running a mile. But it's the ability to conserve some energy for that last, that last lap because that's where most people are gonna set the best time of their four laps, which is very impressive if you think about someone that's coming off the street, even Beck, like she ran her last lap probably faster than her first, first three. Swamp. So the ability to conserve some energy, not go out the gate too hot because yeah. a mile time is not a sprint, but it's not a marathon. Mm -hmm. It's like that weird in-between of you're asking your body to still be in aerobic state yeah. and you're not getting much oxygen in because you're not at like an anaerobic state for like running. Right? Or I'm saying that wrong. You're no, not it's at a, anaerobic. Yeah, yes, it's, it's anaerobic. an anaerobic activity because More marathon so, yeah. is aerobic. Yeah. So you're a lot of oxygen. Yeah. But because of that, you need to find that balance of when to put the gas on the pedal. Every podcast that we have someone in their, in their field, we want them to teach us a part of that skill set. We're gonna take you to the street. So we're gonna get on the track with you. Let's do it. I'll give you guys two workouts before next week and sub seven, sub 6.30. Who do you bet is yeah. gonna shave off the most time? What's the foundation now? You're at 706 and where are you at now? I think that my official was like 751. No, 650. So, sorry, 651. 651 and 706. 
Who do I think is going to break shave off? Because more the loser is going to be punished. Yeah, punished. What's the punishment? Well, well, it doesn't affect you. Oh, okay, I just I'll so you just true. bet. I actually think Beck might have a bigger chance to like to shave off more time. Just off the fact that when she ran 709, she wanted to sub eight and she really like, I think that effort was pretty easy. So I would say, I think you can definitely get sub 650. Yeah. And I think we're in like, the, I think you're I 630. Agree. Don't feel we'll like see. you're hurting my feelings. Yeah. But I the like pressure's on now me. Now I'm going to show you. Yeah. <laughs> He's got to so show I need. you. All I need is the motivation. I'm driven by pain. Okay. Thank you so much for sitting down to chat with it. us on the blue couch. Where can, where can people find you? You guys can find me on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, um, Instagram and TikTok, Matt Choi underscore six. And then YouTube is just Matt Choi. There's a new video out right now. Chicago Marathon. Full experience. Check it out. Peace out. Peace. Peace. Peace.